Hello, my name is Dr. Becky Pitts. I'm a clinical audiologist at the Mayo Clinic in Arizona. I'm here to, today to talk to you about signs and symptoms of hearing loss and what you can do if hearing aids are not an option. The signs and symptoms of hearing loss are asking people to repeat, um, guessing inappropriately or trying to bluff your way through a conversation, making people feel like you hear what's going on but you really don't. I also call um, the blame game where you accuse people of mumbling or um, you say that it, they're not talking clearly, kind of blame it on someone else. Oftentimes people will become a little angry, uh, a little frustrated with the conversation and sometimes they'll withdraw from socially, either from the conversation itself or from different uh, social events. So those symptoms are pretty common for, for people that are not hearing well. If you find that you're experiencing some of these symptoms or if someone you know is experiencing these symptoms, it's usually a good indication that you should get a hearing test completed. Here in Arizona, you can have a hearing assessment done at three locations, the Mayo Clinic Scottsdale, the Mayo Clinic Specialty Building, which is near the hospital, and the Mayo Clinic Arrowhead. All three of our facilities have certified audiologists that can assess your hearing. At that time, they can talk about the results and they can talk about what recommendations would be appropriate for you. If hearing aids are an option, there are two locations that you can, can follow up with hearing aids. The Mayo Clinic Specialty, I'm sorry, Mayo Clinic Scottsdale and the Mayo Clinic Arrowhead. Both have audiologists that are licensed to dispense hearing aids. At that point, what they do is they'll talk to you about what hearing aid technology and styles are available, what would be most appropriate for your hearing loss, and then they can actually do the fitting and the follow-up for you. If hearing aids are not really an option, there are some things you can do to improve hearing for certain situations. These types of devices are called assistive technology or assistive listening devices. The American Speech Language and Hearing Association defines this as it can help you function better in your day-to-day -day communication situation. It can be used with or without hearing aids to overcome the negative effects of distance, background noise, and poor room acoustics. I break this into three categories. Alerting devices, telephone technology, and single source technology. Alerting devices are going to be like a smoke detector, a um, doorbell, or an alarm clock, those kinds of things that are going to alert you to an event that's going to occur. With all three of these types of devices, you can usually get something that's a louder signal, or sometimes even just changing the pitch of the signal, maybe to a lower pitch or a lower frequency sound will help. Sometimes just having an auditory signal alone is not going to be enough. And you may want to find out how you can couple this to some type of visual or vibral tactile signal as well. Um, for instance, an alarm clock can be coupled to a uh, pillow vibrator that actually puts a little device underneath your pillow that when the alarm goes off, this will shake and also alert you to the fact that the alarm is going off. That usually improves those kinds of situations very well. The second type of technology is telephone technology. The first thing I tell people when they come in and they're not hearing well on the phone is to, to, to investigate a speaker phone. Oftentimes that will allow you to hear with binaural sound and improve your listening situation greatly. There are many types of ways that you can increase the volume. Sometimes a phone will just have a manual volume control on it. You also can get a volume control in the uh, hand, or the, re, um, the receiver part. And also you can purchase a, a little um, amplifier that can be plugged into the phone or into the, the phone line. Sometimes you can get, for a little bit more cost, you can get not only a volume increase, but also a pitch or what we call frequency increase. So changing the pitch of the sound uh, to more treble or increasing the treble a little bit more sometimes is what most people will need for better clarity and understanding. 
The third category I um, talk want to talk about is what I call a single source category, a uh, single source technology. This is when you have um, a, a source like a TV or maybe a church, the pastor you're hearing, having difficulty hearing, or in a big auditorium, maybe you're uh, attending a musical or a symphony or something where you're not hearing well. I call it single source technology because the source of what you're trying to hear is really just one, coming from one place. Um, and what we're trying to do, again, as we talked about in the beginning, is to overcome distance and poor room acoustics. So there are two types. There's FM signal and an infrared signal. And they both work very well. They're readily available um, at uh, auditoriums and um, public places. But also you can purchase these to um, couple to your TV or computer um, or to take to church. Um, the basic concept behind either one of these is that you take a microphone, place it by the source or the, the stimuli that you're trying to hear. It's transmitted to a receiver that you would wear, either headphones or earbuds or something, and then that would um, overcome that distance. It's basically like taking the signal and putting it right in your ear. There are two types that um, that are available. There's an infrared type of signal and an FM signal. They both work equally well. Infrared is typically a little bit cheaper um, than the FM type device. However, the FM tends to be a little bit more stable signal. But they are readily available, definitely will overcome that distance and poor room acoustics that oftentimes accompany large areas. If you feel like you would like to investigate these devices a little bit further, my recommendation is to get a hearing evaluation, talk to your audiologist about what options are available and where you can find these types of resources. Ho hope that helps. Have a great day.